celebrate on this first Sunday of Black History Month. Isn't it good just to kind of reminisce about how God has been good, not just in history, but to us in history. And he's led us, he's brought us a mighty long way. Aren't you glad the Lord has brought you a mighty long way? Amen, amen. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord today. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen.
This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. We welcome you to worship. If you're worshiping with us online, by whatever social media platform, or in the building, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are the people who will rejoice and be glad in it. To our friends who are watching, if you'd like to have a conversation about this Jesus who gives us a blessed assurance, call us at 804-895-0213. If you'd like to support this ministry with an offering, you can text us at 73256 and key in the message GBC Give. Are there any first time visitors present? No first, any, anybody celebrating a February anniversary, any February wedding anniversaries? Any February birthdays? And we have Beth, Angelica, Jalen, Gertie, whose birthday is today, 99. Melvin, Minister Brightwell, Kim, Rosalind, Melanie, Deacon Vivian, Barbara, Deacon Ron, Leah, B Betty, Sharon, Stephen, Amy, Teresa, Ann, Larry, Jalik, Stephen, and you who celebrate a fabulous February. You entered the world. You sought, set out on a life together. And we thank God for the gift of life. And we say happy birthday to you. Maestro, hit it. Gracious God, we praise you for life. We thank you for placing us in this moment in history. And we thank you for our ancestors in history who introduced us to you. Meet us in this place and space. Help us to overcome sadness while we're here. Give us the tools we need to overcome the evil one while we're here. Give us your word to build us up while we're here. Lord, meet us here and receive our praise. Meet us here and reveal to us exactly what we're to do according to your word. Cause somebody to commit their life to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hear now the word of scripture which comes from Psalm 100. Psalm 100, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It's the Lord who has made us and not we ourselves. We are the Lord's people and the sheep of the Lord's pasture. Enter into the Lord's gates with thanksgiving and into the Lord's courts with praise. Be thankful to the Lord and bless the name of the Lord. For the Lord is good, the Lord's mercy everlasting, the Lord's truth endures to all generations. The word of God for the people of God, all praise be to God. May the music and the message minister now to our hearts.
You can, you can man. through your word that we might know exactly what we're to do with these gifts you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to call your attention again to Psalm 100 verse 3. I just want to deal with verse 3 of Psalm 100. Know or recognize that the Lord is God. It is the Lord, Elohim, who has made us and not we ourselves. We belong to the Lord. We're the sheep of the Lord's pasture. I want to tag this text. We belong. We belong. Now, this psalm is a psalm of thanksgiving. It's a psalm of praise, Psalm 100. But verse 3 gives ammunition for those who might still need a reason to offer praise. Uh, it is so marked a psalm of praise. And the psalmist says it is not just for one group of people. The psalmist begins to make a joyful noise, all ye lands. That's in case anybody thinks that the Lord is limited. See, goodness, some, some folk think that only good folk can worship the Lord and that only good folk belong to the Lord. But because of God's mercy, that means when you're not good, you still have access to him and reason to praise the Lord. In verse 3, the psalmist says, acknowledge or recognize that the Lord is good. In essence, I can't really worship the Lord until I get to know the Lord. And I don't worry about who doesn't worship the Lord, who does not lift up their voice in expression to praise because it may just be that 
you don't know the Lord the way I know the Lord. And when you encounter the Lord, when you recognize that it is only of the Lord's mercy that you haven't been consumed, when you recognize that it is the Lord on your side, then you'll declare like the psalmist in praise. You got to know who he is. And when you understand who the Lord is, you have a sense of belonging. I was laying to rest my last uncle this past week, and I saw all of my great-grandparents' descendants. I saw my great-grandparents' grandchildren, and my great-grandparents' great-grandchildren, and my great-grandparents' great-great-grandchildren, and even their great-great-great-grandchildren. And even though everybody was masked, I saw some people walking, and they walked like Uncle So-and-so. They had the same hair uh, streak like Aunt So-and-so. I knew it wasn't Uncle So-and-so, Aunt So-and-so, but I understood that we were related. And after I dropped down the mask and put it up and told them whose boy I was, the stories began to unfold. And I recognized there in that sanctuary and out there in that parking lot, I understood one thing, that I belong. Psalmist says, it's the Lord who has made us and not we ourselves. That's good news, that's relieving news because some of us are in positions of, in life where uh, it feels as though we're in something that we did not create. We, we are in uh, acting out a, a play that we didn't write the script for. It. And here we have some relief because we did not create ourselves. And that's good news because sometimes if we had created the script, we might not be in this place and space right now. If you were in charge and were the captain of your own soul, then your ship might have uh, crashed along the waves or crashed into the shore of some remote desolate place. But we don't have the responsibility of being the navigator. We belong to God. Bible says the Lord has made us. And when you understand that you belong, that gives you a whole different feeling. You, you, you might feel isolated. I, I didn't grow up around all my hundreds of cousins and uncles, dozens of uncles and aunts. I didn't grow up around them, so I would see them periodically. And every time I did, I understood that I was a part of a team. I was a part of a larger army, if you will. And belonging to something good means that you are somebody. Now, when you're by yourself, when you're just floating out there in the wind, everything feels uh, overwhelming. And sadly today, there are people who don't understand that they are a part of community. That's why this month and every month we celebrate black history. We celebrate what God has done through us as a people who are Americans from Africans who have made it through to the 21st century. We are the descendants of people who are made in the image and the likeness of God. By ourselves, it might feel overwhelming, but we belong to God, and that's good news for somebody. Because when you understand that you belong, then that makes you feel a little bit better about yourself. He says, it's the Lord who has made us and not we ourselves. That, that means that there are, there are no accidents. You're not a mistake. Ah, you, you, I looked around and, and saw my family, and I'm sure you see it in yours, and, and, and yes, you know the backstories. There, 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 there are some who are here, and, and they're here uh, because their parents were practicing marriage without a license, but they're here. 
Yeah, and then I saw some little ones, you know, who were knee knockers, pulling and tugging and wanting their attention, wanting to be picked up. And, and, and they're not here on accident. They have a purpose. They were not an oops baby. They were a baby who we have to pour into because they represent everything the ancestors had ever envisioned. We got to protect them. We've got to nurture them. We've got to correct them. We've got to train them up. We have to let them know that they are a part of a larger fabric of people that God has made. And what they've gone through, they've not been by themselves. Somebody else had to guide them. Somebody else had to teach them. Somebody else had to lead them. And before the journey is done for them, they'll instill that in somebody else. They'll lead somebody else. They'll nurture somebody else. They will empower somebody else. They will make the team to which we belong proud. He has made us. And oh, so many people, and if you read, if you buy into the media and look through magazines and watch the images on television or your smart device, it might look as though there's some inequity in how the Lord has made us. Because you see some people and, and social media, those of you who aren't there, out there on all these different platforms, there's a platform for just about everything. And if you're not careful, you'll look at somebody else and say, well, how come I don't have biceps like that? How come my hair doesn't bounce like that when I walk? How come my scalp doesn't shine like that and it's smooth? Ain't no bumps and ridges in it, huh? You know, how, how come my beard doesn't look like that? How come my nails don't look like that? If you, if you pay attention uh, to that alone, you will think that somehow you can get what they have to offer and become who they are. You just buy it and, 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 and give your credit card number and then you can look like that. You can subscribe to that service and you can become that. But the Bible lets us know that all of us, especially you, you were made by God. You didn't make yourself. I don't, I don't care how much hair they sell you, you can't make yourself. I, I don't care how many diet programs you try and how many exercises that you get, uh, undertake every day, you cannot make yourself. God made you. And let me tell you, that's good news. You ought to understand that God made us. Oh, how did he make us? He made us in his image. He made us to look just like him. You know how it is at your family reunions, you can, you can see uh, 10 children by the same mother and father. All of them look different. They're not uh, twins, but they all look like their parents. They look like their parents in different forms, in different variations, but they are who they are. And when we look at each other, we see the variations of God in us. And when you look in the mirror, I hope you see a variation of God when you see yourself. Stop trying to become yourself and just, uh, become somebody else or who you wish you could become and understand you did not make yourself. You were made in the image and the likeness of God by God. The same God who made the stars made you. The same God who made the sea made you. The same God who made the mountains and the grass of the field made you. And therefore, you look like somebody. Therefore, you are beautiful. Therefore, you are exactly perfectly as intended as God wanted you. You didn't have to and don't have to make yourself. God already took care of that. Oh, he made us. He made us. He made us. I'm glad God made us. I'm glad God made us in his image and likeness, but that's not all. God also made us resilient. That's why you can go through what you've gone through. That's why we as a people have gone through what we've gone through, but we didn't give up. We didn't all jump overboard on the middle passage. We didn't all cut chase and run and kill ourselves because we couldn't handle the oppression of slavery simply because of the color of our skin. God made us resilient when racism would crush us and destroy our families and separated us and isolated us and snatched away our original language. God made us resilient. 
And in the 21st century, when we have all this modern technology and all of these advances in science, and yet trouble and calamity will find us. And as I look around, you've gone through some things. You've been knocked to the ground, but you got back up. He made us resilient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he made us compassionate in a world that seems to have lost compassion, in a world where everybody seems geared up for war and destruction and bombing and terrorism, both at home and around the world. God made us compassionate. We have the capacity to turn to love instead of hate. We have the capacity to turn the other cheek. We have the capacity to do good to folk who haven't done good to us. We have the capacity to reach out to somebody who is weak and vulnerable and hurting and help them and lift them. He made us compassionate. He made us to look just like him. That's why when you get a good idea, that's God creator at work in your life. That's why when you stand up and correct somebody who's wrong, that's God in you being the one who seeks truth and light. And I'm glad that he made us and he made you. And that's not all. That's just the short list. I'm glad he made us. Yeah, Barbara Pleasant Durrell wrote the song, I'm glad God made me because if man had made teardrops, he'd give me more tears than I could bear. If God, if man had made raindrops, he, he might forget to water the grain, but I'm glad. I'm glad God made me. He gave me wisdom and knowledge. He made me just like him. And he trusted the whole world in my hand. He knew I was capable. He knew I was capable of being a good steward of everything that the Lord has given me. He made us and not we ourselves. If we had made ourselves, we'd still be on the, on the, on the drawing board. We'd still be, uh, yeah, you know, one of those temporary models, one of those prototype models. But you are the finished product and you are a designer original. We are his people. Means that we have been given a purpose. We're his people. We've been given a charge. We are his people. That means there's intentionality in what we do. We are his people. There is service and duty attached to who we are. We don't just belong to lay up and soak up all the benefits. But we belong because we have a job to perform. Everybody who has who expresses the fact that they're on God's side, in God's army, that you need to do everything that you can every single day that you live to make sure that somebody you know who does not know that same Lord the same way gets to know him through you because you have a purpose, you've got a duty, you've got an assignment. See, the church, the local church, is a place that helps us to develop our intent and our divine purpose. That's why we volunteer and we do what we do and we serve the way we serve because we're demonstrating and practicing the fact that if we belong, we got to do something. Mm, it, it, it is just a model for the larger assignment. We have a purpose. Go back and read Genesis and you'll discover that God told humankind, you've got a plot of land, you got to work it, you got to make it grow, you got to make it bear fruit, you got to take care of it, you got to tend to it. You have a purpose and every place that God has allowed you to be, you have something to do when you get there. Stop sitting around, stop twiddling your thumbs, get up out of the bed, turn light on, put your clothes on, get ready for work and do something. And oh, there's a whole lot to be done. There's a whole lot to be done. Get a book and read the book and learn how to do something you don't know how to do right now. And if you're already doing that, keep on reading and learning until you have perfected that and you're able to perfect it so that you might be of service to humanity and a reflection to your God that you can do anything by the grace of God. You have a purpose. You're not just sitting idly by and stop looking at social media and watching people who seem to be doing what you want to do and you think you can't ever do that and understand God has given you something to do and until you are ready you'll have to graduate to it but just do what you can right now.
You can't start off at the top. You can't start off at the CEO. You got to start at the ground floor. But if you keep on working it, you'll, go, you'll move up. As you keep on developing, you'll discover something new about yourself. Remember now, God didn't create the world in one day. God could have, but God took six days to do it. And if God took some time to learn and to perfect and to develop, then you ought to take the same kind of time to develop your purpose in life. Yeah, stick to those books and stay in school. I know it's hard being on virtual, but you can still learn it anyway. In fact, you got your whole house to yourself. You can just read through the books. You can go, yeah, 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 I know when we go back to the library, don't let it be the place that we avoid uh -huh, after the pandemic is over like we did before the pandemic started. Pick up a book and read that book and discover who you are and learn your history and learn how to perfect the purpose and listen if you don't think well I don't know what I want to do find something you like and if you don't know anything that you like to do find the stuff you like to buy you like to buy technology then you ought to become a technologist and that means you ought to understand everything about the stuff you like to buy so you can perfect it so you can have what you have and enjoy what you enjoy you like working with people they, they got an industry wide uh, uh, field today or people need somebody to work with people in the medical field, in the social services field, in the hospitality field. You have purpose and your purpose ought to be when you smile, they ought to see a smile of somebody who looks like God. When you care for, they ought to feel the touch just like the touch of somebody being touched by the Lord. You have a purpose, you have intentionality and you can do it because you belong, you're on God's side. Ain't no lazy soldiers in God's army. He says we're his people and the sheep of his pasture. I'm finished here. The sheep of his pasture. Not the cub in his pack. Not the foal in his stable. No, the sheep of his pasture. Not the lieutenant in his army, but the sheep of his pasture. Well, that makes one stop giving a joyful noise, because the psalmist here is kind of giving a backhanded compliment or a front-handed insult. See, to be a colt, a foal in his stable, you know, you think thoroughbred. You think gallantly running along a field. If you say you're a cub in his pack, you think about a strong bear. And I know we like to think of ourselves a certain way. The psalmist doesn't call us pack. There's nothing, I, you, can, you can get my full attention on television, just have a nature show, an animal show, and I'll stop and watch all of it, especially if it was one I haven't seen before. And I've seen a whole lot of them. And you have seen a wolf pack chase down some big moose, and they work together, Take it back to the den, but that ain't us. Right. We ain't wolves. We ain't bears. We're not thoroughbreds. He says we're sheep. And that might mean mutton, lamb chops. That might not be so good. And the truth of the matter is, while we're made in the image and the likeness of God, we aren't as perfect as we think. We're not as tough as we have built up our spiritual person in the physical. Let me tell you about sheep. Sheep can't run fast. Those stubby legs, they're slow. Sheep overextend their lines of credit, credit card to the max. 
Yeah, you go back and read Psalm 23. That's why he leads us because, see, sheep will eat everything in that square mile. They'll eat everything up until it's gone and there is no more. And they'll look around wondering, what, what's next? Where are we going to eat next? They'll, they'll die of exhaustion. Gobbling up what's there. They got to move. Yeah, sheep can't see far. They have limited eyesight. Not visionary. They can't see it until it's right up on them and then it's too late. But they can't run anyway. And the Bible says, we are sheep of his pasture. I don't want you to think that because we are on the Lord's team and we belong to the Lord, that there's some kind of magical perfection some kind of, you know, superhero in us. Properly understood, we are sheep. We can't move very fast. We're sheep. Somebody's phone's going off. Get it and turn it off. We are sheep. See, sheep don't, they can't find the phone. They're trying to figure out how to, sheep can't maneuver and change. See that, and that, that that's who we are. We're, we're, we're sheep. We, we can't see down the road. And you stand up late at night wondering and worrying about the future. Baby, stop trying to worry about the future. You can't see that far. That's why you belong. You stand up late, bags under your eyes, anxiety filled, stressed out, depressed, worn out, too tired to go to work, lose your job because you can't show up on time because you're tired and sleepy, blood pressure out of whack, all of that. And yeah, you got to realize that you all this, you are sheep. And sheep can't see very far. Oh, you want to have resources. You want to live like you think the Joneses are living and the folk on your social media device are living. You want to be large and in charge, but you don't know how to regulate and self-control the little resources that the Lord has given you, sheep. Sheep will eat up all the grass. They'll eat up every bit of grass and then look around and, and say, well, where, where is the rest of it? And they don't have any more to eat. Every now and then our resources run out. Every now and then our resources are thin. But that's the life of sheep. Because we just consume, consume, take, 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 take eat, eat, eat. We just take it all up without any idea about how it replenishes. We don't think about that. And that's still a good reason to praise because if you haven't experienced it, if you keep living, you'll encounter those days when your money is funny. That means it's not laughing at you, it's laughing away from you. And your change is strange. You've got to find nickels and pennies just to pay that one bill. You don't know how you're going to make a living from paycheck to paycheck. She trying to invest in stuff that moves instead of stuff that grows. Sheep. But that's reason to celebrate because I'm sure if we pulled everybody's uh, credit report, we would discover how true that is with us in here. Yeah, now you may look like your credit score is 750. Mmm. Yeah, you, yeah, it, it, it's a shame when you, the shoes you bought, the shoe size is higher than your credit score. But we're sheep. And anybody who wants to own up to being sheep, you're in the right place. Because, and then that, that, that makes sheep very vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, y'all have read Psalm 100. Y'all have read over that we're sheep in this passion. You, got, you get excited and run, want to run laps and pray, praise holy hands. But just think, I'm going to unpack that sheep. The wolf sees the sheep at a distance. And says, by the time they realize it's me, I'm going to knock them out. Yeah, the bear gets hungry and says, I'm tired of eating berries and branches. I'm going to get me some mutton. Sheep are vulnerable. And if you feel vulnerable in this community of faith to which we belong, 
That's a legitimate feeling. Because you don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen. And all you know is you don't have the resources to respond. You can't get away from it. You couldn't have seen it coming no matter what. You weren't even thinking on that level. Yeah, there's some things that are going to happen to you on God's side. But don't worry about it. Because while you're sheep, you don't have to see everything. Sheep, but you don't have to provide for anything. Because the Bible says we're sheep in his pasture. The psalmist in another place says the cattle on the thousand hills belong to the Lord. And I want to let you know that the hills belong to the Lord. And the pasture of which you occupy and dwell belong to the Lord. That's why the Lord has to push us and prod us and move us from one place to the other so we don't just take up all of the resources here, but we allow it to replenish and yet he still feeds us. Anybody ever can celebrate the fact that when you did not have the credit score, but you needed the car, you did not have the credit score or the down payment, but you're still in the house. You did not have all of those material things, but somehow the Lord put a resource right there in front of you and you're able to enjoy because you're a sheep, but you're in his pasture. Yeah, when the wolves were outside howling and they just knew they were going to get you. Somebody knew that death was a wolf howling and death thought it was going to overtake you. Somebody has overcome sickness and you thought and the doctor thought that sickness was going to overtake you. But sickness didn't overtake you. Maybe you got too many enemies that you call friends on your social media. So they're always dogging you. They're always bullying you. They're always telling you what you can't do always questioning why you should enjoy what little bit you do enjoy and post your picture next to but let me tell you he's the god who protects us from the wolves and so i belong to somebody who protects me when those there are others who would devour me that's why you survive the way you survive not because you're so ingenious but because you belong to the great shepherd and the great shepherd has a unique way of calling us. Somebody said, well, how do I know if the Lord is calling me? You can discern it because it's a voice that makes you want to go toward the voice. It, it, it's a voice that you may not always be able to see, but it'll calm you when there's trouble around you. And, and, and so because you know you belong, you're not out there by yourself. Because when you get lost and want to be big and grown and do your own thing. That's all right. He'll let you because wherever you end up still belongs to him. And then when he comes looking for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah because that's what shepherds do. Shepherds go and look for. And Jesus is the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd. So when you think you're going to go out there and do what you're big and bad enough to do, he'll come looking for you. Oh yeah, that's why the songwriter said he's seeking for me. Oh, isn't it wonderful he's seeking for me? And, and even when I misstep and even when I fall short, even when I backslide, he's still looking for me. In, in fact, he knows where you are because wherever you are, he owns it. So you're never ever going to escape him. You're not going to be so down that he can't pull you up. And I want to tell somebody who's feeling down, discouraged, depressed, he will meet you there. And he's still able to lift you up. I, I don't care how weak you are. He will carry you on his shoulders. He will guide you. Yeah, that's why the psalmist says, "My thy rod and thy staff. Because see, my, my gun will run out of bullets. My baseball bat will be too short or slip out of my hands. But his rod and his staff give me comfort. That, that means he's going to protect me. And, and because I'm in his pasture and because I belong 
to him, then he's going to provide for me. That's why you can sleep the way you sleep at night because you know the Lord is already taking care of it. Why? Because I belong to the Lord. See, folk get mad with church folk because church folk don't indulge them in paying their rent after they spent their rent money at the club. But you see, because we belong to the Lord, we got our priorities straight. Yeah, we like to have good music. We like to have good fun. We like to sip good liquor. But let me tell you, when we are in his pasture, he helps us to prioritize so that when the rainy day comes, uh, uh, yeah, when the finger popping is over, when, when the bottles have emptied out, we have somebody who has laid up for us the resources that we need. See, when fake friends leave, because they leave at four o'clock in the morning, he's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. See, that's why you want to belong to the family of faith, because when all else fails, you got somebody who can you can turn to that see see we, we have to stop saying all i can do is pray no baby that's what what, what better is there than prayer I, I can write a letter to the president he may not read it i can write a letter to the queen she she's not going to read it but i can call the lord myself i'm in his pasture he's my shepherd he's got to respond because he looks i look like him and you know how it is when somebody looks like you. You, you, you kind of feel an affinity toward them. He, he, I look like him. And so, therefore, he's not going to turn his back on me because I look like him. And that, that's why we gather in the house of the Lord. We've come from our various driveways and apartments and houses. But when we gather in this place and we understand that we belong to a community, we understand we belong to a group of people who have the same testimony and that is God has been good to us. That's, that's why we gotta kinda stay open and stay masked and all that, but we gotta gather in the house of the Lord because the Lord has been good to us in the pandemic. But baby, I got news for you. He's been good to us before the pandemic and I'm not sure what is going to come, but I know he will be with me and, 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 and because he He's going to be with me. I'm going to make up in my mind to stay with him. I'm going to stay with him. I'm going to stay on the Lord's side. I'm going to call him when things are going well. And I'm going to call him when I need a little help. I'm going to ask him to help my sister, my brother. And I'm going to ask him to help me in time of need. I'm going to lift my hands in the sanctuary when they sing your goodness and your mercy toward us. When I turn on the ignition in my car, I hope to get to where I'm going. But I ask him to lead me and guide me when the doctor opens up the folder and turns on the computer. I don't know what that's going to mean, but I got somebody with me and my spirit ain't sick. I got somebody with me that can keep my mind clear. I got somebody with me who can even make my old body attuned to the medication and I can declare in the house of the Lord, I'm glad I belong to his people. I'm glad I belong to a group of people he blesses. I'm glad I belong. I'm not out there floundering by myself. I belong to the family of God. I belong in the body of Christ. I, I belong here. You can't run me out. I belong here. You can't tell me my nationality. It disqualifies me. I belong here. Doesn't matter what my credit score is. I belong here. Doesn't matter how good I am. I belong here. Yeah, I got some skeletons in my closet. I got some misdeeds that I have done, but I belong to him. And because I belong to the Lord, I, I got an obligation to bless his name. I got an obligation to bless his name. I got to say, you are my provider. I got to bless his name, Lord. You are my healer. I got to bless his name, Lord. You're good. I got to bless his name, Lord. You're my savior. I got to bless his name, Lord. You're my walking cane when I can't move about. Lord, your joy in sorrow. Lord, your comfort when I'm grieving. Lord, 
I gotta bless your name. I'm not gonna bless the president's name because they change out every eight years. I can't bless the governor's name because they come and go all the time. But I will bless the Lord at all times. In good days, I'll bless him and tell him thank you. In bad days, I say, let me lean on you. Yes, I'll bless him at all times. His praise shall be in my mouth. I might fall sometimes, but his praise shall be in my mouth. Thank you, Lord, for protecting me. Thank you, Lord, for including us. Thank you that we belong, we belong, you belong, you belong, you belong, heard too many sad stories over the last week, you belong, and yeah, you don't have to worry about who doesn't like you, I belong to the Lord. And, and he loves me. You, you trying to impress somebody across the aisle. You trying to impress somebody at work. But I belong to the Lord. And because I belong to him, I may cry sometimes. But that's not tears of desperation and despair. That's just tears for the moment. Because I'll bless his name and declare he's good. And, I, and you only know that when you mess up sometimes, that you can declare in his mercy. Yes. See, so I looked at my family, and I knew all, I knew the family stories and secrets that I know. I knew that some folk shouldn't have been there because where they were at one point in time, the bullet should have exploded. The knife should have ruptured an artery. The transmission impacted should have crushed their chest. Ah, oh, but his mercy everlasting. And then after all of the stuff you think you know, all the philosophizing that you might do, all of the modern stuff you think you're up on and hip on, you'll discover that his truth. See, Grant Great grandmom and great granddaddy's truth was that the Lord is worthy to be praised. His truth. Oh, you watched them through the years and they would shout. And you say, let them shout over there. We don't shout as much because we don't have colored white drinking fountains anymore, I guess. So we, we don't shout when we get to church. Because we're online now and people will be watching when you get to your significant place of employment tomorrow. But we didn't always have that. Oh, but his truth endures to all generations. Aren't you glad you belong to that community? Our Lord and our God, we thank you for including us in your family. Thank you, Lord, that we're sheep totally dependent upon you, sheep vulnerable to the wolves and the bears of life, sheep who don't have as many resources as we are able to consume, but, oh, Lord, we're in your pasture. You're our shepherd. God, I pray now that there might be somebody in this place or watching virtually who will just accept that we belong to you and that they would give their life to you and that they will let you show who you really are to them on their terms. As our testimony, our witness is, there's nothing better than knowing Jesus, the great shepherd, who takes our sadness and gives us joy. Takes our sorrow and gives us strength. Let them make up his or her mind right now to accept you and to belong 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The door of the church is open. If you're in the building, please stand. And if you'd like to give your life to the Lord here, join me on this front row. Text in the chat, I want to belong. He will pick we'll engage you up you. and turn your life around. You want to know him. Get to know him. I right know today just come. Sister Gladys Holland in prayer, her son-in-law passed this week. We want to keep Minister Brightwell in our prayers. Whatever the concern, whatever the petition, as we go to the Lord in prayer, share with us now in prayer wherever you are, making an altar wherever you are. Gracious and eternal God, we've discovered that there's nothing better. Even when the storms of life assail us, you're the shelter and the protector. God, continue to be that for us. Lord, you the shepherd who speaks to us. Let us hear your voice when difficulties come. Let us hear your voice when we do not know where to turn, what move to make. Guide us and give us what we need to move forward. God, I don't know the burdens that are on those who are listening under the sound of my voice. But oh God, I pray that you'll put in front of them the resources that they'll need to thrive and to succeed. Resources of your grace and of your mercy. Resources of your shelter and your guidance. Resources to remind us that we look like you. God, build up our self-esteem. Give us victory over depression and sadness. Give us peace to drown out our anger and our hatred. And give us love so much to dispense to everybody and in every situation that we will encounter. Do that for us, Lord, this day, and every day, and every moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Until next time, go in peace. There's nothing 